welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome if it is your first time watching first of all i want to make a confession before i go ahead to talk about this video now in the process of recording this video i have tried more than 10 times because i have not been still like i've been anxious about it about what to say about saying it the right way so i would start speaking and then go to end the video go again end the video so i have not been still this is me telling you i don't know how to be still so speaking about be still today is saying i'm learning with you how to be still like scripture says in psalms 46 verse 10 the scripture lets us me and you know be still and know that i am god whenever i hear be still it depends on the situation if everything is calm if everything is okay, if everything is noble, nobody speaks to me in a way I don't like, nobody upsets me, the environment is calm, of course I'm going to be still. But what about uncomfortability? How do you react? Or what is your first response when things become uncomfortable? Or when you are in an uncomfortable situation? Now Psalms 46 verse 1 is the verse that we do quote popularly that God is the nearest helper in trouble. And whenever you get into trouble, the first thing we do is start telling God, you are the nearest helper in trouble. Oh, help me. Oh, do this. So in the very first verse of these Psalms, David said, God is our refuge and our strength. A very nearest helper in trouble. This makes sense because it is telling you when you run down to verse 10, it's now giving you a reply of God when you are really in trouble. Because when we are in trouble, the first thing is to go in the motion. Like to go as you feel. Whether yours is to flight, whether yours is to fight, or whether it is to freeze. But all of us have a reaction to trouble that is not to be still. Because we can't be still on our own. We do not know how to be still. We are not so anchored in ourselves to know how to be still in trouble. I had to do a little study so that I would know what does it mean to be still and know that he is God. First of all, be still there does not say hush, quiet. I know there are scriptures that it says so, like when the scripture told the children of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord when they were about to cross the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14. That was be quiet. They were murmuring and complaining. And it says, tell them to stand still. Tell them to keep quiet. Tell them to hush. And there are times that God tells us, you are complaining and whining too much. Just hush. Keep quiet. But this very be still in Psalms 46 is talking about when you are really in trouble. Do you know that if you are in trouble, let's just talk about the simple analogy that you are angry and you really want to show someone that they shouldn't talk that way to you because they said something displeasing and somebody else comes to you and say, calm down, calm down. <laughs> How do you feel in that moment? I know that in that situation, if someone is to tell you, calm down, you're not going to be calm. In fact, you might even turn the face of the fight to that person and tell him, don't tell me, calm down. But then, in trouble, we know that we don't have the capacity in us to be calm. Then he says, be still and know that I am God. And when I studied that word, be still means let go. It means you are holding on to this, this anxiety. I don't know what you are holding on to. I don't know what trouble you are holding on to. You are trying to fight by your own strength. There is a scripture that says the battle is the Lord's, which means let go of this battle. It is not yours to fight. It is God's fight. This is God's battle. Let God fight this battle. And we have another reminder in First Peter that says, cast your case unto the Lord for a case for you. And here, this is what that scripture is saying. Let go. Let go and let God. I know you've heard that one before. Let go and let God. It is God saying, let go and know that I am God. It is your knowledge that he is God that will help you to let go. Because you know that he is able 
capable and in the right position to solve this, to handle this, to help you with this. But if you are not aware, fully aware, in trust to him, like from verse 1 of the Psalms that talks about who God is, how he's the nearest helper in times of trouble, how he is the mighty one, and all of that. If you read down before the verse 10, that it now says, be still and know that I am God, it should encourage your heart to trust that God is supreme, to trust that God is powerful, to trust that God is the greatest, and there is no trouble, there is no situation that it cannot handle. So, in the midst of your situation, it is not easy for you to be still when the situation is chaotic, but through God, you can be still knowing that you have backup. It is just like you are in a fight and you are about to be overcome and you have backup. Someone that is, you know, equal to the tax, equal to this fight, you know, just like a tag team partnership fight. If you've watched wrestling before, wrestling is one of my, you know, loved sports. You have a tag team partner and maybe when you enter the ring, the person you're about to fight is bigger than you. You can tap in. And let go. Call in your, your tag team partner and let him take over. But this is not in the mindset of you thinking that you are equal to God. This is telling you that in everything, always tag God in. Whenever you have trouble, tag God in. Whenever you have issues, tag God in. Whenever you are going through anything, tag God in. Do not go in your own strength thinking, I can handle this one. Be still. It is not telling you be quiet. It said, let go. See, stop. Let go of this. Know that I am God. Give it to me. Let go of this thought. Let go of winding around this thought, of going in circles with this thought, of going in circles, becoming anxious and wearing yourself out. Are you not tired of worrying? That's a line to be still. By now, you should faint. Just worrying. You should be tired of worrying. You should be tired of holding on to this when you cannot solve it. So why not just trust God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. Be still and know that I am God. Now, it became more beautiful to me when I read the word, I am God again. If God would say, I am God, the first I am is reminding me of the time that Moses to ask God, what name would I give to the children of Israel when they ask me, who is this your God that sent you? He said, I am. I am. I am that I am. So he's telling you, before anything, I am. Who made all the things you see today? The I am. I am God. No one can have that bold statement to say, I am God. It's only him that has authority to say, I am God. And if he, the I am, tells you, be still. My dear brother and sister, we should learn to trust this heart. Why we are not able to be still is because we don't know how to trust him. We don't trust that he is God. Because if we trust that, if we trust that he is God, we should know that he is supreme. We should know that he is capable. We should know that this is not beyond God, but it is definitely beyond us because we can't deal with this. So this is like God asking you, are you doubting that I am God? Because you're still worried right now. Are you doubting that I can handle this? Or are you afraid that I'm not going to come true? You have to forsake this into my hands. You have to forsake this trouble into my hands. Allow me to deal with it. Is it a trouble of sickness? By his stripes we are healed. He said, I dealt with this already at the cross of my son. Jesus already dealt with all of the trouble that we would ever have in this life. You and I, whatever trouble, whatever issue in our health, in our businesses, concerning our future, Jesus has already handled it. So we can have this confidence to come to God boldly and be still. Let go. Let it go. Which means once I let it go, it's no longer in my jurisdiction. I, I don't have to be worried. And the last thing I want to remind you 
about this this deal is that you should stop holding on to it and let God hold you. Maybe you are trying to hold on to God in your own strength, in your own effort. God is saying, let go. Let me hold you. You don't have the capacity to hold on to me. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been trying your best. But you're holding on with your little strength. is not enough to get all you want or to get your heart to trust him fully because you think it is by your efforts. You think it is by your holding and you are tired of holding because you are exerting an effort that is from you, which is not enough. He says, don't worry about holding me. Let me hold you. Let me hold you. Be still. Let go. Allow me to hold you. Consent, which is just us believing that we are in his hands and there is safety in him. I really hope that the thoughts I'm sharing in today's video will help you when you go back to study the scripture or do a deep research about your own life, how you handle the troubles and the issues that come to you for you to say, from today, I'm going to let go and let God. I'm going to let go and jump into God's hand. I'm not going to try to hold God by my own strength, by my own efforts. I'm going to allow him to hold me because there is safety there. If I am holding him at some point, I'll be tired of holding because I'm using my effort. I'll be tired of doing the prayers in the midnight. I'll be tired of fasting the way I am doing right now. My body will wear out. So I don't have to keep on holding by my strength. I need to allow him to hold me so that I will consent to be in his arms as a lamb. And he's my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Thank you and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.